Let's talk about R. We're going to use it a lot in our class. In this video, we'll do four things. We'll look at places that we can find R so that we can use it. We'll look at some R functions. We'll create an R script. And we'll talk about why we use R. R is very well known and respected in the uh, in statistics and computer science. There are many places that you can access R as an online compiler. I'm going to be using this particular one, but, but if you do a, a search for R online compiler, you'll get a long list of them. Each one of them have, have something in common with the others. There's an area where you can write a script, the instructions that you want the, the computer to do, a command that will run it or execute the script, and a place that the results of that script show up. These free online compilers often have a number of ads that show up, and they're not, and sometimes they just quit working. I mean, they're free. <laughs> the, somebody's uh, donating some computer time to them. So it's nice to know where more than one is if you're going to be doing your calculators here. You can also install R and R Studio on your own computer and work more like a professional does. But for much of what we do, we can do it with uh, an R compiler. Let's look at some examples. The way R works is it has a bunch of verbs that are called uh, functions. For example, sum. It's a verb. Sum means to add some things up. It's a command to add things up. And it's used as a function. So sum of what? Sum of, well, whatever numbers you want to add up there. If we gave R the command, sum 3, 7, 11, 2, then it would give us a result of 23. Let's look at that in our online compiler. I'm going to look at the sum of 4. The sum of 4, 3, and 7. Now when I execute that or run that script, then sure enough it gives me a result of 14, and you can check that just in your head. Very often in R, we're interested in a sample. Here we've got a sample of student exams and the scores that they got on those exams. There was an 82, 85, 92, 87, and 98, respectively. R has a command that will take a list of numbers and make, it, make them into a vector. That command is called concatenate, which means to link together in a, a chain or a series. And so the command is just a C. It stands for concatenate, and it's used so often that's why they just use the letter C for that function. It'll take those five numbers and make them into a vector. Now something that's interesting and worth noting here is that we can highlight a script that we've got written somewhere, copy that, and then paste that, that copied value, into our uh, script editor. So we can execute that script. What it did, it just took those numbers, put them in a vector, and then it outputted that vector for us. Often what we'll want to do is take one of these objects, maybe one of these vectors, for example, and store them somewhere. This word grades is called an object. We could name it to be anything that we wanted. Look at this symbol right here. It really is literally a less than symbol followed by a minus sign. That looks like an arrow. The people that invented R used that arrow to say, I want to assign what's on this right-hand side to this object that I've named on the left-hand side. So they're interested in taking those numbers, building them into a vector with the concatenate function, and then storing them into grades. Let me take this whole command and copy it and paste it into my oops and paste it into my R console. Now watch something interesting when I execute this line of code. It looks like nothing happened. Nothing ended up in the result uh, line. But what's happening here is R is doing something. It takes these numbers, 
turns them into a vector with a concatenate function, and stores that vector in an object called grades. But we didn't say to output anything, so it didn't. But at this point now, for, for the rest of this script, once that command has been given, any time that I need grades, then when I execute that now, then it will show me what's in grades or use grades in some way. For example, we could look at the sum of the grades. Let's go back to our compiler. So now I've added to our script. We're building this object called grades. I want it to show me what is in grades, and then I want it to add up those grades. So now when I exercise this script, sure enough, there, there it is. It shows me what's in grades, and then it sums those up. If all that I was interested in is knowing what the sum of the grades were, then I could edit that script, and there it's just showing what the sum of the grades is. Here's another interesting uh, command. Another interesting function in R is length. It just tells us how long that grade vector is, how many items there are in there. Now this is, that was such a small list that it was easy for us to count. We knew that there were five in there, but the length of grades is just going to be five. Okay, now let's put some of these things together. Let's look at this script and just read it together and see what's happening. Here are those grades. They're concatenated to make them into a vector. That vector is then stored into an object called grades. In the next line, length looks at grades and stores that amount, how many there are, in an in a object that's called n. So that n is storing the number 5 right now. Then in the next line, we're building an object called total, which is going to be the sum of all of those grades, add up all those grades. Then what happens when we look at total divided by n? Think about that for a minute. What is that calculation? Yeah, that's right. It's what we usually call average. Statisticians call that a mean. But uh, it's, we just found the average of those grades, and it output that amount. Let's take that script and either retype it or copy it and paste it into our script editor and then execute that. And sure enough, it gives us the result. 88.8. .8. Okay, so why are we going to use R in this class? Well, R is a computer language. We use it to tell the computer how to do some, uh, some calculations, but it also can be used to communicate between humans, between you and I, about the details of how to do communicate, of, of how to do uh, uh, calculations. There's also a third reason. It really is a top-rated software among data scientists and statisticians, and it's really quite a bit easier to use than a calculator. One final comment before we quit. We can annotate a script to help communicate more effectively about how the calculations were done. These uh, green lines have kind of wrapped around. They're really just supposed to be on one line, but there's the grades. We're we know what's happening there, but we might put a note here, and you can comment by just putting a pound sign. Anything following a pound sign, R will not do anything with that. Uh, so it just becomes a comment between, uh, between people. Let's highlight all of this. So I copied that script and, and uh, pasted it into our, our, our compiler. I readjusted the size of this window so that the comments aren't wrapping around to the next line. And so these comments kind of help remind me, if I'm looking at this script later on, uh, I couldn't remember exactly why I was doing some particular thing. It reminds me about what those are. Or it communicates to somebody else some details about how we're doing a particular cal calculation. And what it's doing is finding the average or what statisticians call the mean of those five scores. Okay, great. See you in class.